Hello, everybody. I have uh, bad news for you. All of you, at some stage in your life, will have back pain or neck pain, or some sort of sports injury. These are movement disorders. Now, if you had a blood disorder, then you would get a piece of paper with all of your blood metrics. You will know everything about it. But if you have a movement disorder, you'll come to a physiotherapist like me, or a chiropractor like Jesper, and we would look at you and we would give you our opinion of what's wrong with you. We won't actually measure how your posture looks, how your movement looks. Now in the age of Google Glasses, sensor technology is inexpensive and it's understood by people of all ages. So we have created the solution to movement, posture and balance assessment. Let me show you how. So a patient comes into a room Touch the screen. or an area and me, the physiotherapist, is still in the treatment room treating other patients. They touch the screen and the system calibrates to the person. While he's watching the screen, the screen is watching him. And we're creating a 3D image of Yosef from his toes up to his head. We're monitoring movement over time. So it is essentially a 4D system. This is the type of information I need to make good clinical decisions. Right now he's standing still and we're looking at his static posture. We're looking at his postural sway. We're also looking at his alignment between his head and his trunk and his hips and his legs from the side, from the front, and even helicopter view so we can see rotations in the body. You can't currently do this with a 2D system, a camera. It's impossible. Now we're looking at side bending, which is a good indicator for back pain. Don't you think that you'd like to improve the 1 in 5 back pain ratio to 1 in 10 at your workplace? Squatting is tracking the knees in relation to the rest of the body. Very important for sit to stand, very important for lifting. Balancing on one leg is looking at his ability to maintain his position. 70% of elderly people above the age of 70 fall and injure themselves if not die. We can screen for that using this system. Which nursing home would you send your grandparents to? The one that can predict if they're going to fall before they fall, or would you leave it to chance? Then we're looking at squat. The single leg squat, and maybe Joseph can continue to show you the exercise here. Something's happened to you. The single leg squat looks at the motion control of the knee. So we can see the alignment of the knee on the way down and the alignment of the knee on the way up and compare left and right. Presently there are millions of people buying a new pair of shoes because they've got runner's knee or some sort of sports injury. But they have no idea about the metrics of that kinetic chain. There is too much guesswork occurring in health right now, particularly with these sorts of problems. Now what you see on the screen now is some feedback. Education is very important. I shouldn't have to repeat myself with every single patient throughout the day when animation with a voiceover can give them much clearer and consistent information based on how Yosef looks today. So now Yosef gets a report and that report is broken up into very easy to understand areas. And he'll look at the report and if he chooses will come to me and say, can you please give me some advice? Okay, I pop out of my room and I give him quick feedback about, okay, now I can see here, this is the left hand side, your hips are that way, and you're not bending so much on the left hand side, and your knee tracking is terrible on the left leg. Let's see you on Thursday for treatment, and in two weeks I want to retest you, so your insurance company has got some good evidence to suggest that what I'm doing with you is actually working. They'll continue to fund it. Thank you. In terms of monetization, in a private clinic, I can increase my income by $900,000 per year. If it's a lean hospital system where you're trying to save money, state-funded hospital, one day of quick posture testing is equivalent to two weeks, 10 days of a full-time person, doctor, physio, doing that work. If you're not 
assessing, you're guessing. And at this day and age, we should be using sensor technology to, doing, to do the work that we can do much better than humans. I put my hand up and say that Quick Posture does a better job than me as a physio after 25 years of working at evaluating posture and movement control. Thank you. It's all yours. I would just, uh, I would say congrats to the assistant. Uh, I couldn't do half those things, the squats, <laughs> much less in front of thousands of people, so that was impressive. Um, I, I, this you have to explain at some point, but I'll leave that. <laughs> um, what's the, is this telemedicine or is this in the office? I didn't quite understand the modality. It seemed like it was in the office, but is there a telemedicine application where a lot of this could be done remotely, and have you looked into that? Yeah, the, the ideal would be in the early days to establish legitimacy and uh, have the healthcare community and the wellness community familiar with it to be on location and to some extent under the care and supervision of qualified people. Uh, but there's no reason why in the future it can't be in people's homes. Uh, one idea we have in the very north of Sweden is to collect a group of pensioners who are at risk of falling, putting them in a church hall and sending that information down to Stockholm so that an expert can look at the risk of falling of that population of 60 people way up in the north where the, nobody lives except mosquitoes. Uh, in terms of uh, pharmaceutical companies, for example, doing controlled studies on Parkinson's patients, Right now, they're asking questions. How is your posture? How is your movement? Are you falling over? Why not set up a screen with a sensor at home and get them to do the movements on a daily basis and look at it real time while it's actually happening? How does it work with the clothes versus no clothes? I mean, like, does having clothes on make a big difference? Or does like, the patient actually strip down to make it more accurate? Or how does that Question. work, I guess? More importantly, do we need to have a suit like that? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? That's yeah. Nice. This suit actually doesn't help because it's a bit reflective, but what we found is that... I'll uh, still take one. You want me to take it off? <laughs> <laughs> now, what we found is that uh, normal tight clothing like we have in Sweden works fine. Uh, the American suits, so this is you normal take the suit off. Yeah. <laughs> and the problem can really be in the knee tracking because if you've got a lot of um, fabric, yeah. it can mess with the interpretation, but normal clothing is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we do as instructions, we say, have a bit of tight clothes, you don't need to take your clothes off. You definitely don't need to wear a suit like this, although it might help, or I don't know. But uh, so normal clothing, that's, the, that's what we say. And on the hardware side, do you need that big wide screen that you had, or can you just do this on the iPad? Well, we looked at different solutions there, and, and when it comes to going into healthcare, you need to standardize it, and we need to have one type of unit, we need to have one precise height, so if we have an iPad, people might be lower down, which will, will uh, make them have a different posture than if it's high up. So we're trying to standardize it, and that's, the, that's a part of the standardization process, basically. Mm. From, a, from a user interface point of view, um, there, there are two things that are important. You can put sensors on people, mm. uh, for example, accelerometers. But the mere act of putting something on somebody will change their behavior. Mm -hmm. And we want to see what is as natural as possible, because that is really how they move. Mm -hmm. And if you give them something down here to look at, it will, of course, affect their posture. So but we'll, we'll but get a hypothetically, you could put this on the iPad and say, put this at eye level, or you know, put it you know, three meters away at eye level. In yeah. A standardized. yeah, we could put it. Do you, you don't need that big white thing that you carried in. No, we could put a reasonable sized tablet, as long as it, it works for elderly people as well, if that's the population you're testing and just put it on a wall in a fixed location, or you could put it on a trolley, we've got all kinds of designs for that, and move it between departments. So there's absolutely no reason why we couldn't do that, as long as it was standardized. How does this technology differentiate from some of the rehab programs on using Connect? You want to take that? Well, first of all, the rehab programs, um, what we're trying to do is, is uh, we started off trying to select a single target market, which is physiotherapy and chiropractic. And we saw it was much broader than that. Um, what I found in my early work is that a lot of these rehab programs tend to stay in a university level, and, and they don't reach the mass market. Now, Connect has been around for five years. There's been great studies on validity, etc., but still we don't see it in every rehab home. And I think that the reason for that is because there's a big discrepancy between university and research world, and if you want to call it the actual world. So we're bridging that gap, and that's why 
that's why we're moving in there. But what about in terms of the technology? What, how are you guys protecting yourselves from others that could create this using the Kinect right. or using iPad or another medium? Yeah. Great, good, good, good question. So at the moment, we're not fixed on any hardware. The hardware will change. It will get better and better. So I, I imagine the hardware we're using now, which was actually 2012 hardware, uh, will look very different. And, and we know that the people who supply our hardware now have an even smaller sensor, which we could use. Um, in terms of our business, uh, we probably could partner with a hardware provider, for example, if it was Microsoft or one of the originators of sensor technology. Um, but our business presently is more on the service design and the software. The hardware will change. So who buy, does, does the provider actually buy the hardware or are they just buying the software that runs on top of their own devices? The present business model is a fee for service, so there'll be a license agreement for that. And uh, we would hope that we can provide the hardware so that we can standardize it and see that it's actually being used properly. Uh, we don't want people fixing and tricksing with hardware in their own clinics and organizing it themselves. Uh, so um, we really want to keep our options open right now in terms of the hardware we use and be fixed on what is the service design, what are we going to do with the data we're getting from this hardware. That's Great. really where the magic is. Let's hear it for Quick Posture. Well done.